Hello, everyone. So this is Marco. Uh, we had a very nice consensus lab team week in uh, Belgrade, Serbia, uh, lots of uh, outcomes. And uh, this short presentation is about uh, these outcomes. So just as a reminder to all, uh, consensus lab has uh, three different uh, organizes its projects into three different research and project areas. This is the blue project area uh, and project name start with B, uh, where we essentially develop and research and develop hierarchical consensus, which is our version of sharding uh, using essentially submits. And uh, then we have a Y area of project or yellow area where we the research scalable consensus implementations and then the green one in which we are uh, dealing with the uh, parallel execution of uh, smart contracts and arbitrary computation over data. Uh, so as you will see, this uh, update is organized into categories. So we'll, you will first hear updates on the projects in the blue area, uh, updates on the outcomes of the sessions that we had uh, during the team meeting in Belgrade, then on the yellow area, then on the green area. And then I will also introduce some other uh, sessions that we, uh, that we did. But before that, uh, I want to focus on what is Consensus Lab going to deliver as an MVP of scalable consensus for Filecoin this year. And uh, we had a few sessions that are related to this and Dragan Zhuzhin helped us uh, uh, with this. And uh, several th these uh, sessions were first session on FVM alignment and then uh, a detailed session on test network productization. And basically this, uh, these outcomes will also inform or uh, with our session on what comes next uh, in 2023. Uh, also, uh, offline of the team week, George and Jenny had a, uh, Jenny from uh, Lotus team, they had a detailed discussion on how we can collaborate with Lotus team. So I included these uh, uh, into the summary of updates with respect to our MVP. So with respect to FEM alignment, uh, Dragon updated us on the latest goals of FVM, so I won't repeat them, but it seems that uh, built-in actors, uh, we have the code frozen, and uh, uh, I think uh, the production red version is moving to July, and uh, programmability of FVM is looking for October for code freeze. And accordingly, we are planning uh, our, uh, our work according to the FVM plan, so we adjusted a bit, because hierarchical consensus critically lies on two actors which we need to implement uh, in FVM. So these are subnet coordinator actor and subnet actor. And uh, currently in our uh, first MVP of hierarchical consensus, these are Go actors that are uh, we now porting to FVM actors. So essentially uh, subnet actor will be definitely user defined uh, uh, FVM actor. So it, we need to wait, it needs to wait for them to uh, FVM to deliver. And SCA is currently built in. We are discussing uh, with the FVM team, should it stay the built-in actor or should it also be a user-defined actor? One of the action items of, of this alignment session is that Alfonso uh, will work with Dragon to become part of Filecoin Early Builders program. Uh, then uh, update on George's discussion with uh, Jenny and the Lotus team. So towards productization of uh, what we do in Consensus Lab, uh, Lotus team will appoint an engineer to work with the uh, Consensus Lab on backporting Udico, uh, Udico, uh, Udico pull requests to Lotus. And uh, engineer will provide us, uh, Lotus engineer will provide us to be named, right? Uh, design and implementation review. And from the consensus law perspective, this can start in uh, mid Q3. Uh, Lotus team is uh, currently uh, basically doing its own prioritization. Currently it's big log uh, for Q4. It might start earlier, but this is up to the Lotus team. Currently we're, we work uh, basically with Q4 as a starting point. Uh, we discussed also testnet uh, community engagement uh, and the goal is to bring up a dozen SPs and maybe consider incentive programs, bug bounties and hackathons and uh, other things related to testnet. So for the testnet what, uh, and productization, what are, what are we going to focus on for this year? We defined a few must-haves, which essentially you're going to hear in the, in the updates on individual projects later on when I saw after me, uh, details what each of these sub bullets, uh, must have sub bullets means. Uh, so we included some provisional dates. And uh, so 
our consensus love scaling MVP needs to have uh, MVP of crypto economics for hierarchical consensus, which we target for end of August. Uh, this is, uh, you're going to hear update on this. And uh, uh, MVP of one functional subnet consensus. This is developed currently in project Y3. You will hear more about Y3 later on. Uh, we're going to have a fee proposal in the second part of Q3, so late August, early September. Utico testnet, as I already discussed uh, briefly, when we had a Lotus uh, team uh, uh, update from discussions from Lotus team, this is targeted for late October. And full uh, compatibility with FVM, given that the FVM code moves and we depend on built-in actors, is going to come after October. So we are reshifting our priorities. For example, we worked uh, in Q2 on this, but now we are shifting priorities uh, around a bit. Uh, specification updates are coming uh, after passing the synchronization with Lotus team, so late Q4. There are a few nice to haves, uh, which I won't be reading out, but they're like monitor visualization, documentation, and other things. Uh, these are nice to have in this year. They're definitely must have before uh, to be defined deadline in 2023 when we are uh, going to production. So in the following, uh, you will hear updates on individual on sessions that we had during team week on individual projects from uh, blue, yellow, and green work areas. You will also hear an update on uh, H1 Retro, so first half of 2022 Retro, uh, retro uh, which we did also session four. So uh, we'll give you an update on this. And we also had a very interesting session on what comes next. So preparing the consensus lab research and development agenda for 2023. Uh, you will also that there like this is not all what we are going to do. Uh, we are actually in this what comes next. You will hear like what we also plan uh, for community work in next year. But we have also very ambitious plans like apart from projects that we are doing in house uh, to even extend uh, more out outreach and community building. So with that, I'm giving to uh, consensus lab group members to give you uh, updates on individual on sessions that we had related to individual projects. Thank you very much. So everyone, so I will give you a brief update on the outcomes after our laboratory development for Project B3. Project B3 is the one where we are trying to move uh, Hyrapica consensus to production. And this last quarter would be mainly focused on targeting the FBM. So our, our MVP works with the legacy VM, and we wanted to all the mechanics to target FBM as we moved in true production. So what we've been doing is mainly uh, a list of high level milestones of what we've reached so far is first of all, we have a custom built-in uh, actress bundle, including the SCA. The SCA will, is the core actor for the operation and that implements the logic of HC. And now we have it and we can load it in any clients that runs uh, FPM. Then we have uh, a reference implementation of the subnet actor. The subnet actor is a user-defined actor. So we've uh, implemented it considering Falcon M2. Uh, and um, this is a, a, implement a reference implementation that uh, governs all of the policies and the life cycle of subnets. And that can be defined for users in order to determine like, the consensus algorithm and so on uh, when they spawn a new subnet in NHC. And finally, what we've started is the integration of uh, and the, the rebase of all of the FDM run, runtime in Teodico. And we haven't implemented all of the end to end um, mechanics of the protocol yet, because once we realize that it works, so we have a fork. Uh, if you go to the experimental FDM M2 branch in Teodico, you'll be able to test uh, loading this custom built in actors bundle, uh, deploying your own subnet actors, and so on. But we haven't implemented a lot of the parts of the of all the integrations of the protocol in Teodico because we wanted to wait for FDM milestone two um, to come and to have the code freeze in order not to rewrite again a lot of these of these code. And as we wait for that code uh, freeze, what we will be focusing on is in defining uh, the spec for the for HC. So uh, having a low level de description of the spec and all of the FIPs in order that. Uh, to start to kick up the discussion with your community and the core team um, that will help us and uh, to determine all the details and start the implementation of the production code. If you're interested in tinkering with this MVP of uh, HC over FBM, we have a reference implementation of the FBM that includes a new type 
for the SCA and the rest implementation of the F4 address, which is an address that includes context subnet information about the, the subnet uh, as a context in the, in the address. Then we have a fork of the built-in actors, including these, the implementation of this SCA as an, an additional uh, built-in actor. We have a repo with the subnet actor uh, reference implementation for FBM. And finally, we have this branch of Eudico that includes, uh, I mean, that is the one that works with um, to load these both natures and uh, and points to all of the, the right ports. We already uh, rebased also IPM into Eudico, so um, we have like the built-in actors that work now in Eudico with the uh, with the same um, built-in actors bundle as in, as in Lotus. Um, um, so, uh, meaning that we have in Eudico already rebased FVM, so if we want to introduce um, FVM built-in actors without all, all, all these ports and all these mechanics, it's already available uh, for everyone to use. As part of the of, of P3, we also discussed some of the open problems that we have in the implementation and that we may have in the future. One of them was censorship resistance. We didn't have really clear how to fix the these censorship resistance problem where a parent maybe prioritize some, some children over others or maybe completely censoring cosmic messages from the parents because the parents have uh from children because parents have a lot of power over their children and we realize after a lot of discussion that it's futile um to try and fix these censorship resistance because we could be breaking lightness so what we want is to make sure that if a sadness is honest there can't be a uh, censorship resistance and in order to achieve this, uh, as part of Project Web 3, that I think that you, you, you've seen already uh, an update on this project, we want to explore the, the chain quality metrics as a metric that if it exists and is good, it will allow, uh, it, it ensures that there can't be uh, censorship for children. This is like the first of the, um, of the problems, but then even if we consider this chain quality property, and we can consider there are no censorship, we have the problem of minor, or in this case, parent extractable value. And even if we have this chain quality, the, the minor extractable value or, or parent extractable value is still possible. And this is something that we will explore and, and different schemes in order to include this will be explored midterm and we and they won't be considered for the first implementation of, of HC. The other problem that we had uh, and that we, we already knew uh, in HC was related to data availability because of, um, I mean, as a result of how uh, cross-net messages are propagated and executed in the different subnets when they are originated somewhere else, uh, we need um, that net to be resolved in order to messages for, for messages to be executed. If we cannot resolve this data, either because it's unavailable or because we, uh, it comes from a subnet that is malicious and didn't want and doesn't want to give us this data, we may harm the liveliness of uh, the subject that it needs to execute these uh, these messages. So uh, in the current implementation, we have this problem, but in order to, to work around it, what we will do is that the parent, as the parent needs, uh, is the one that propagates the message to a child subject, what it will do is check if the data is available before propagating it and check if it can be executed. And if this is not the case, um, after a few retries, Instead of harming the liveliness of the subnet, it will discard these crossnet messages, marking and flagging that the data is not available, and it will uh, send a message back to the source subnet to notify that the crossnet message couldn't be executed because the data wasn't available. And in any case, we want, um, in order not to, to spam all of the hierarchy, we want to give uh, feedback about this failure to the destination subnet. This was the most pressing problem regarding data availability in the current implementation, but then we have a problem of data availability related to fraud proofs and state proofs. As part of the crypto account model and, and the different ways of incentivizing good behavior in, in subnets, what we realized as, is that for many of the proof of the fraud proofs or state proofs that we want to build in order to report detectable misbehaviors, we need data availability. So, Sorry, so what we will do is to implement a storage interface in subnet so that any full node or light client in the network can uh, persist on chain data required to build these state proofs and uh, in order for it to be retrievable and, and accessible. And some of the backends that we're considering for this persistent storage is, for instance, Falcon and IPFS. The idea is to be transparent of the backend and to allow any user in the subnet or any um, full node in the, in the subnet to have on chain data available 
for its access in order to not have it going. And hopefully we will be able to pick it up from the work of other teams like Planet Lab that it's uh, that has this open program of data retrievability and data availability. And finally, as part of P3, we also discussed the, the CryptoCon model that we've been designing for a few months and discussing with CryptoCon Lab. We already have a first draft with the basic building blocks. And uh, the discussion in Belgrade was mainly focused on how to report what are the kind of detectable misbehaviors that we can um, report in subnets and um, how, we, how they would work and how we can build these protocols. And we realized that in the end, all of the misbehaviors or, or the main misbehaviors that can be detected and can happen if we don't have an anonymous majority in a subnet are equivocation, where the, there's a deviation of on the consensus, depend, like the deviation may change depending on the, on the kind of consensus implemented in the subnet. And uh, we discussed the kind of proof that we can build in order to punish the parties that uh, were involved in this misbehavior. And then we have invalid state transitions, which are um, uh, situations in which the block may be valid, so consensus may be reached, but the state transition from a previous state to the new one may be, may not be correct. And we can also build a proof. We think that we can build a proof uh, in order to report these kind of misbehaviors. As immediate action items, we want to have a first implementation MVP of this report of the report of these uh, misbehaviors, and uh, we want to also start exploring how the use of LURK or other CK proofs can help us with this problem and mitigate a lot, uh, for instance, the invalid state transitions in behaviors. And also we want to understand the role of payment channels over HC because the conversation derailed a bit. And we realized that uh, payment channels may have an important role in HC in order to propagate information or to make like what we called one calls between different um, points in the practice. And that's it from my side. Thank you very much. And if there are questions, please let me know. Hello. Um, so this is the Y4 update. So the motivation between uh, projects Y4 is um, with recent advances in um, research in blockchain consensus protocol and higher recall consensus uh, coming soon, um, we want to investigate if it would be a good idea to um, change EC, the, the, the consensus protocol of Filecoin, um, and maybe design um, a root consensus protocol that is well adapted to EC, uh, to HC, so hier hierarchical consensus, and, um, and to Filecoin in general. So uh, for this project, we first want to start by formalizing, formalizing the security and performance uh, requirements of uh, Filecoin. So we have discussed this with the team and basically uh, so we want the, the consensus protocol to be co compatible with Filecoin storage requirements. So this means um, that window pass should be included in time, even in period of congestion. Um, also, it should not be uh, possible so for an adversary to, to censor a window post or to um, fork the chain for a long period. Uh, this will break the, the story uh, security requirements of uh, Filecoin. Also, we want this protocol to be quite simple because that's much easier to reason with. So, um, we don't like a high throughput because um, we have hierarchical consensus that will take care of uh, of the throughput of all the wood chain we need that much throughput. Uh, however, we want to be able to scale to 10,000 nodes because um, like at the moment in Filecoin, there are 4,000 nodes. So in the future, there may be more. So we think that it's realistic to have a protocol that scale to at least 10,000 nodes. Uh, also, we don't need to have such a fast finality again, because like um, everything will be happening, like most of the transaction will be happening on the level of subnets. So from the main uh, main net, we don't need that, that uh, fast finality and censorship resistant, I've already talked about this. So we want to formalize basically what I've just said, and then we want to look at the literature, um, and especially new literature that has uh, recently come up, and um, study the trade-offs of the different uh, protocols that have been proposed recently, and then this will allow us to um, make a choice. So first, do we want to actually change EC? Maybe we don't. 
we have to the EC is like the, the best source. Um, but if not, let's see if there's something better out there, or maybe we will have some ideas and want to start a new design from scratch. And then uh, what we would like to do is write formal um, uh, security arguments uh, for the security of the protocol. Hi, this is Mathieu, and uh, the update on the Y3 project about uh, scalable subnet consensus. So first, what we have already, uh, that is uh, basically the Y3 M2 milestone that we finished recently. And in particular, that means we have a proof of concept mir Udico integration, uh, where several components of the MIR-based consensus uh, component are still missing or stops, but uh, the demo already works. We have crash for crash fault tolerance in the sense that system, the system operates even after uh, one of the nodes crashes forever or less than the tolerated fraction of the nodes crash forever. We have uh, mere improvements basically every week. And uh, we have Dennis, Sergey, Andre, and myself working on the project. So what's next on the Y3 project? It's uh, basically a Y3 M3 milestone that consists of a minimum viable product of a mere based consensus component for Udico. And uh, in particular, that is uh, what we are envisioning is the is a stable architecture of the consensus component is efficient Udico integration without uh, having to do double work. For example, if the Udico networking um, component sends some data around, we shouldn't be sending it around within mere as we are doing now. We want to have a Narwhal-based availability layer. Uh, we have to uh, have a complete consensus protocol implementation with all the features necessary. Um, we want to have it um, include basic tests, preliminary performance benchmarks, and we want to support reconfiguration. And the immediate next steps to achieve this is basically writing code to implement all this. So that's it on the Y3 project. Now, we also had another session about representing and storing the state of the blockchain, either in a compact form or by storing all the inputs. Because currently, uh, what most blockchains do is append only state. So we basically model the state as, uh, some, um, as the accumulation of all the updates since the Genesis block. And if the updates let's say that these are blocks have constant size, then with each block, the state grows and the size of the state is linear in the number of blocks. Now, this is great because it's simple, it's universal and it provides some uh, good security guarantees, but it requires a low data rate. So this is perfect for Bitcoin, which is storing all the blocks forever, all the time. And uh, in the particular case of Bitcoin, this gives us some tens of gigabytes per year, which is very feasible to store. However, as we are targeting scalable and uh, high throughput consensus implementations, this uh, append only representation of state might be suboptimal because it can uh, result to even easily to petabytes per year that have to be stored. And a lot of this state might, a lot of these updates might not really be useful anymore. So the Conclusion is that subnets require support for state compaction. The current implementation of uh, the Filecoin client actually stores all the blocks with all the updates forever. So next, uh, we propose to explore possibilities of deleting all these state updates. And that's it for me. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. I'm going to make a brief update on the G1 area, green one. Uh, so what's the current status? Um, so we almost completed a state-of-the-art in uh, deterministic parallel execution. So remember that uh, G1 is about the ability to uh, execute smart contracts in parallel in order to um, fasten the execution of uh, the distributed applications that will be executed on, 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 on top of a VM. Um, there is basically one takeaway message, which is that many uh, different techniques exist to implement deterministic parallel execution. This is actually a, a fairly hot research topic since I would say about 15 years. 
And these techniques, they differ not only in design and performance, which we would uh, uh, obviously understand, but they also uh, differ in the type of um, determinism they guarantee, and they all present uh, different trade-offs. Um, so together with uh, my master student, Nico Rabi, we um, uh, studied the different uh, differentiation criteria that exist. And uh, you have the list here of those that we selected, type of determinism, scope of determinism, the memory consistency model uh, that the DC technique uh, shows, the supported parallel brain models, the supported system models, um, its compatibility with uh, existing hardware and software, uh, the requirements in terms of configuration, and finally the, the, the performance. So on all those different uh, criteria, I mean, th there are different uh, choices that uh, uh, can be made by the DC technique. And obviously, depending on the choices, uh, you might want to apply that technique in a particular context or not. Um, so that's the first part of um, the work that's been done on the G1 area uh, during this period. And the second part is about starting to design and implement uh, the support for multi threading uh, for WASM. Uh, the initial prototype will be based on uh, WASM time uh, because, I mean, this is a fairly popular. Uh, uh, exhibition engine, and that's probably the one that's going to be used uh, within at the end. Uh, so what are going to be uh, the next steps? So implementing full support for multi-threading in WASM, that would be the, the, the first item. Then uh, the plan is to compare existing DCP techniques uh, on WASM concurrent programs. Um, this uh, includes obviously uh, smart contracts that will be executed within WASM, but we don't want to restrict ourselves to smart contracts. We also want to study uh, as a relevant benchmarks. And uh, finally, a, a, a special focus on, on, on smart contract execution. The idea is to find and apply the best DC technique uh, within WASM time to support the parallel execution of smart contract um, execution. Thank you. Since we are basically at the end of the quarter, we also decided to use this opportunity to do a retro on the first half of 2022, particularly the time since our last meeting, and try to, to determine as a group the things we're doing well, as well, the things that we want to change for the next cycle. And so starting with the good, we have been working in the open more and more. Uh, since last meeting, for instance, one of the changes we made was to start publishing weekly notes of all of our project meetings. In addition to that, we have been putting out prototypes, papers, demos, or so just a lot of material on the, on the work that we're doing. The team has been growing. We just uh, welcomed the first cohort of summer fellows. We have three uh, PhD students joining us for the summer for the first time. And for the most part, we have been delivering on time on our roadmap, the different projects uh, that we're working on. Uh, the bad, we have at this point fewer external collabs than, than we uh, would have wanted. So we're still doing a lot of the work internally and we, we, we definitely plan to, to change this also to, to increase our capacity. Occasionally, we've got uh, stuck in analysis and decision-making. Uh, it's not a recurring, it's not a frequent occurrence, but, but yes, but even that is something that, that we need to debug. So in terms of the changes for the next quarter, we do want to have more collaboration within the team as well across the people working in the different projects. We want increased community engagement. This means organizing more events, putting out RFPs for our, our projects and for other problems that, that we think are interesting to work on, and also attending uh, other events organized by the community, not, not, just taking, not just stay in our own bubble. We're piloting also an asynchronous reading club. This is extremely asyn asynchronous, so uh, there is no set schedule. The goal is basically to document papers that we otherwise read and make them available for, for people who, who are also interested. 
And we're also piloting asynchronous speed dating. Speed dating is what we call our weekly meeting series. And so uh, they're, they're uh, quick fire, 30 minutes, but we'll even then uh, try to make them async also to accommodate uh, new time zones that are joining the team soon. Finally, we had uh, quite uh, active uh, and, and controversial somewhat session on what comes next. And of course, we have a roadmap that goes basically until the end of 2022. So it is, uh, you know, at the mid-year point, it's about time for us to, to start thinking about the things that we want to do uh, beyond that point. And so this is a, a long list of, of problems uh, and, and projects that I won't just read out. But, but yeah, but we, there's all sorts of things weaker than total order. Uh, semantics, we have uh, analysis of network topology, for instance, front running prevention, uh, DRAN just come out with, time walk, with uh, time walk encryption as well, so, so that might be an interesting thing to explore. AI design consensus protocols is uh, quite an interesting one. It's probably not something that we'll be doing internally. It's also not something on a very short term roadmap, but we may put out some funding programs to, to support more work in the area. And of course, you, you can you can read through the, the rest. Uh, we will be developing some of these bullets into, into actual discussions on our GitHub repo, so adding a lot more detail. And of course, we invite everyone to, to participate uh, in those discussions. Uh, the last bullet there is also quite important. So we do our roadmap uh, for 2022, mostly as us delivering uh, production-ready implementations. But our work is not done until things are actually uh, running in the, the Filecoin mainnet. And so that is uh, what we also want to accomplish in 23. And that was basically the, the summary of our meeting. So thank you for watching. If you'd like to talk to us, you can again reach us on, on our GitHub repo where we do have uh, an active uh, discussions section and also issues for all of our projects and a lot more stuff. You can also check us out on the research uh, on the protocol apps research website and finally also email us and uh, come talk to us in the consensus channel in the Filecoin Slack. Bye.